Welcome back to Banish Souls. This is your captain, Cryptic Gaming. So, I know it's been a little bit since we put out a build sheet on a ship. Been kind of playing around with some options, and I think we have another winner here. Uh, we're calling this one the Doomsday Brigantine. So, it is amazing. Uh, let's get into it. So, for those who are unfamiliar with ships, how we pick those based off of what type of battle we're planning on. So the Brigantine's already a good, well-balanced ship, kind of for everything, it really is. If you build it right, it's going to withstand those PvP battles that we can throw this into. So DPS ship specialize in dealing damage and status effects. The DPS favors an aggressive play style. That means you're not running. I know you see a lot of Brigantines run. Here's why you want to be encroaching and getting as close as you can and knocking these ships around Bullhorn, that is the big perk of this ship, increases the damage from ramming by 45%. It also reduces the duration of torn cells effect by 40%, so you're going to get moving a little bit quicker. It's going to apply flooded to an enemy ship upon ramming. That sounds pretty amazing, doesn't it? Well, we want to build upon those base stats as you do with any kind of an RPG character, and this is a ship. It's no different than if you were some kind of a warrior or a dark elf or any kind of other type of RPG game you've played. You build off the base stats so you have a really strong ship. So let's see what we have here. Now for the weapons, I wanted something that's going to really add into that flooding effect. So we went ahead and we used these core knots here on the front. They have a 600 meter range, five and a half second reload on that. So they reload really quick, damage 1127. Then you're going to get what's called a riptide effect. It adds 50% of damage as severe damage when target is flooded. Now remember, we have the bullhorn. It's already doing 45%. Adding flooding, this is going to add an additional 50% as flooded damage. It's going to add another 10% of flooding one on there as well. So what does that look like? You're going to have 100 or 1,025 damage per shot and flooding of 102. So that's pretty cool. It's going to be pretty great on that ship. So we went with that. Now on the sides we have the flooding demi cannon threes. Okay. Now notice we're sticking with the demi cannons. We really enjoy those. I've been loving those. For up close, you want something that's going to be able to push that ship back when they come in. Because when you're in PvP, the quickest way to end a PV, uh, PvP battle is to do what? To board the ship. So you want to detour them from actually showing up alongside your ship. You have a very quick reload, three and a half seconds. Amazing. Kind of limited on range, 275 meters. We can boost that. We're going to show you how to do that. Gun ports for fire rate, three and a half seconds. So pretty good. It adds another 20% of flooding damage. Remember, when you're coming in, you aggressive play style. You've rammed them with the hook. You've unloaded your culverins coming into it on those uh, tsunami effects. And now you're backing up with this demi cannon, just smash and smash and causing that massive flood damage. We've got those on both sides. And then on the rear of the boat, I went with the Basilisk three. Why did I go with that? Well, it is a heavy bronze culvern. It's designed to render ships vulnerable to crew attacks. So you may have to spin around, pop them with the back of this thing. It's going to increase your chance to board them. That's right. Increases the charge rate of the vulnerable effect by 50%. If you don't know what that means, you're going to have twice as many just about, or a twice as good chance to be able to actually board that ship as you're clearing that deck. Very good cannon to have on your ship, Basilisk 3. If you're wondering where you get these, you have to get those in the black market for this stuff. Except, of course, for the Coronod Culvern uh, that caused the Riptide. That is a item that you're only going to find inside of the pass. Okay, so let's move on to armor. So we're using the Black Prince. I have used the Wrathful Ward for a while in that because you're doing a lot of ramming you're in close and it does a great job of zapping out that stamina whenever you're inside of a brigantine you can zap their stamina if you can get close enough and ram them it's not a matter of if it's just a matter of how long it takes you to catch them so pretty good armor but we wanted something a little bit more ability so i went to the black prince why did we do that well the resolute increases damage taken i'm sorry reduces damage taken by 50 percent when whole health is less than 33 percent so it's going to be taking less damage. And you go, well, when you're at 33%, probably not going to last too long. That used to be the truth of it, but they've buffed some of this equipment. So we've come back in to redo our builds because every patch you need to check and see what those numbers are because they're raising up quite a few of these furniture pieces and even armors and stuff. They're doing some adjustments, trying to get it bounced in for PVP before this PVP really kicks off. I know right now we have that flag you raised up. You can 
pop some people around and stuff like that but understand there is going to be a major pvp aspect to this game later so they're just introducing and getting people used to the idea of what it's going to take to be able to compete within this so their furniture man this is what's going to make or break a ship so we're running those dimmies i want to increase the maximum range of the dimmy cannons on the side to give me just a little bit more range when they come in for that approach on the side to board you so we put on the dimmy cannon furnace 10 percent range doesn't sound like much but you're going to be glad it's there then of course our rigging station recovers one percent whole health per second when whole health is less than 20 percent something else that's pretty good on earth so that's basically when you get down to around that 30 percent mark you're going to notice that the hole you may see it drop pretty quick once it gets in there to around 30 percent it almost stops taking damage it's going to take two or three ships to take you on out running this setup with the way they have the stats now then we have the iron cladding station this is going to increase the damage from ramming by 25 percent think about that you're already getting 45 percent we're adding another 25 percent so that's going to give you a 70 percent increased damage guys when you're smacking into those ships amazing piece to put on this particular ship then of course we have the Lepontent schematic that we add in here if we're going to be doing pve which is a pretty good thing to have on there at all times you have the demi cannon works is going to increase the elemental damage multiplier of demi cannons by 19 percent that means flooding damage for these demis is going to be increased by 19 percent now what you can do if you know for a fact you're not going to be dealing with any of the plague ships and you want to replace this lapontin schematic with something special i would highly recommend that you come down and you would put on where is she at right here maintenance forge the reason I suggest that you put on that maintenance forge, if you're just strictly doing PvP, is if you do happen to sink, and you're going to be able to sink any ship when it comes to this game, you, you can get outnumbered quick. You don't want to be messing around with a half-healed hole coming back into battle. This is going to heal you up as you're on your approach to grab your gear and just be able to tear back into battle without having to find a port. So another great piece to have on there. Uh, we actually may go ahead and leave that on for right now. The reason I said we may leave it on, no, you know what? I don't think we need it on there right now. I'm going to pull that off on the uh, Lepotence. I'm going to add that rigging station here, or maintenance forge, sorry. Lepotence, like I say, that is a great piece to have. It's going to show you those those weak points and stuff. We could probably actually remove a separate, a different piece here for that, leaving Lepotence on here. Why would we be kind of in the air about that well the reason i'm kind of in the air about it is it does give you those 10 percent boosts so you could probably come in and remove something that's maybe not as important so increasing maximum range of demi cannon by 10 percent it's not increasing it that much so you could technically come in here and switch that out like i say it's going to be depending on what you want we were showing you the build that i've been using but like i say there is more than one way to build a successful ship in this game so we're going to set it up like that and we'll give this a test drive. So when it comes to the cosmetics, that is dealer's choice. So what I use, uh, I like to use kind of a variety of different stuff. I don't really stick to one any one motif. So I'm using from the Abyss. Pretty good little cell. I enjoy it. It's you know, got a little color to it, but it still keeps those dark colors as well. Then for the figurehead, I like Caliban's offering. Now that is a Sovereign's piece that you would have to buy, guys. So it's not going to be for pieces of eight. Ended up with enough sovereigns, so I went ahead and picked that up. I think it looks pretty cool on the front of the ship. And then for our hull, we used the Tiger's Shadow, Eastern Tiger set. Pretty nice looking piece, I think. Then, of course, we went ahead with the Scurlock Prince uh, sides here. Just adds a little effect, and you can, you can make that look like whatever you want, man. You can go just crazy with the spikes if you want to. I mean, there's so many options of what you can do with your ships in here but we're going to leave it with this scarlock prince i like the look of it. it looks pretty good then of course your tags whatever you want so i'm using the vengeance tag i like it looks cool blends in with the boat pretty nice it's from the ashen corsair set and then the of course from the ashen corsair set we have the be always ready helm wheel and I'm not really sure what the heck these helm decors make. I mean, we don't actually see the compass or anything like that. Maybe if you're in that first-person view in front of the helm, you might see that a little bit. But it's just kind of dealer's choice what you want on there. Then you can change your crew to whatever you want. So this was the Children of Dagon set, which was inside the pass. But they have so many different 
you know sets you can use it's basically whatever you want then of course your helms mate I was pretty sure we had switched him out to a lemur I'm not sure why we ended up with the cat again I prefer the little monkey looking creature man then of course you have your your uh, mask set that you can change this out to make it look like whatever you want I typically leave this on because when you're in PvP and you cut this thing around and, and give it that full trim cell it's going to kick that it almost always makes them deter to look to see if man is coming in great piece to have for some psyop stuff in their psychological warfare while you're in battle you want to deter their attention then your crow's nest again you can pick a variety of stuff I don't see a whole lot of differences I did see this one here this was part of that uh, pass set where you have all the little octopus tentacles and stuff and used to run that on all the ships quite a bit but I think I'm gonna switch back to the watching evermore ashen Corsar set it has a little skeleton hanging off the mast pointing off into the distance looks pretty cool to me then when it comes to your fireworks that is your basic stuff that you could set up whatever your greeting is I mean you you're gonna open a lot of stuff up in this game so this was the coronation I don't think anybody really uses it anymore I like to use the last laugh it's always great after you sink another player you can laugh at him when you pull off but folks that is how you build the doomsday this is an amazing ship in my opinion we will set sail and put it to the test I think we're at St. Anne so it might take us a second to actually get into an actual situation where we can do some damage let us see what we can find one of the easiest surefire ways to find any kind of a well off ship is you can go and collect eights or you could just point it up toward the storm and that's going to give you a really nice location so you may be wondering why we didn't use the Ouroboros and the uh, water tank on this 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 particular ship with the brigantine I think everybody can agree at this point that one of the biggest downfalls to it is the fact that it burns through stamina something fierce like really bad so when you're bracing and all that you know it works it works but you're not going to keep the stamina up long enough to keep one the bracing effect and also it uses that stamina to rebuild your your brace shield when you bring up that shield it's going to burn that to keep it bolstered up so as you can see we just dropped down in stamina so I think that this here is a pretty good option uh, when it comes to you can still brace but that that 33 percent whole health where you hit there and it's going to reduce the damage you're taking that's that's a great thing while you're sitting there you can just make sure you trim down to no no trim and you can brace like just about all day long using the setup that you got between shots you just kind of wait and it'll start to build back up then it should be reloaded and you can brace again by that time you should be able to eat more food that's how you will operate this ship in a combat situation now I know there's a lot of people that use the Scarlock Long Nines or the uh, Great Springwall 3's or even the uh, Twin Winch Ballistas and those are great options uh, if you if you hit with them now understand you can get a good shot with that and you can talk about how it's it's OP or not OP but just the ultimate build but unless you're hitting consistently with that stuff it's not really helping you it's kind of like the rim of torpedoes that everybody went on this big thing about how amazing and how great they are with consecutive hits but the problem with it was getting into consecutive hits because every ship this one here will outrun it you're not going to catch it if you're coming this way and to shoot a torpedo next to you all you got to do is just list just a little bit and it's going to blow right by uh, which is a great option for this ship uh, same with any of the other ships you can just dodge right around the torpedoes they were kind of pushed real heavy after playing with around with some torpedoes early in the game I realized they weren't for me pretty quick uh, when it comes to the the effects of your uh, rockets and stuff you know they work great on walls I mean they may actually be just a little bit more effective than the Leopold 3 when it comes to fort walls but one of the problems with those is you're not always just shooting walls, you're hitting ships. And the aim mechanism used to be a little hinky. It seems like it's a little better. So that could be something we might go back to later. But to me, it just made more sense to stick with what's proven. So I don't use the Live Pole 3 when I'm doing PvP ships. I use that Le Fleur 
the reason we use that is because that is going to, one, break their stamina down. I mean, that was just off the first blast. It is, it is a beast, though. If you're having a problem with PvP, or I'm sorry, PvE, great ship. That was the helm ship. Toasted him real quick. And you will be able to just toast through PvP ships as well, guys. It's, it's fantastic. So, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, we've got quite a few of our members now. We have, I think it was 260 active members last time I checked. And, and man, it can get active. We have several chat rooms set up, voice chat rooms. So, people, I know it's... It, not always possible to get everybody in the same server so we actually have our commodores and stuff and one of our commodores been coming out with some great builds as well so uh definitely watch to the end of the video here if you're going to see a card pop up at the end it's going to recommend how, how to get to his channel so you can check out some of his pvp builds he's got some amazing stuff our play styles are just a little bit different so you're going to see some some subtle differences in the ship but you're also going to see some similarities because when it comes to building a ship you have to have a good groundwork to work off of and that's one of the great things about there being so many pieces of furniture and so many different play styles that are out there. You have some of those guys that are more aggressive, like to be right up in there, do a nice ram, take a ship out. That's actually some test we need to run real quick before we end this video, guys. We should do a ram test. Let us see where a ship could be. In fact, I see a couple of helm ships down here, so let us go experiment. Now, remember, whenever you're doing brace remember to hit that brace button before you ram because you don't want to take damage in the ram and you need to make sure that your stamina is up before you start your ram because the last thing you want is to run out of stamina your shield drop right before you hit these guys man okay so we're fixing to boost our food and then we're going to brace pretty good little hit we hit him with those basilisks Okay. Now this is where it gets tricky when it comes to the demi cannons is you will run into the situation where it might just be a little out of range. But as I said, great ship. Now the LeFleur, while it does work in against these normal ships in PvE, it's not a waste. You can do a pretty good job damaging ships with it. The the Leopold 3, in my opinion, is the better the better ship or the better the better uh, weapon for your ship when it comes to auxiliary in the uh, PVE. But for PVP, you're going to need it to drop those braces, drop their stamina, break the brace shield, and all that kind of good stuff. Oh, we just missed him. Did you see that? Now, you may be asking yourself, have I given up on the Sandbuck? Absolutely not. I am in that thing every day. Most of the events that we run, the big uh, server farms and stuff we do, that is one of the things that I will run the most. You do have good cargo health. As opposed to the Brigantine, the reason I don't use it much in farming isn't because it's a weak ship. It's because there's not a lot of cargo space. I know there's a piece of furniture in it. To increase that that we can do but it's not one of those things I, I really care about playing with much but I hope y'all have a great day looks like we just glitched up a little bit we will talk to you later